the moment you have been waiting for is finally here. You will get to visit Greece, your dream destination. So you pack your bags really quickly. You already have an idea of what you will wear in Greece. You hop onto your flight to go to Athens. Perhaps there you rent a car to go to the port, Piraeus, where you will get into a boat and visit Santorini and Mykonos or any other island where you will spend the rest of your vacation on a budget because it's the end of your vacation. If that sounds similar, that is because that's what many people do every year when visiting Greece. And your plan may be not exactly the same, but it follows this pattern. But what if I told you that I just mentioned a few of the five most common mistakes people make when traveling to Greece? So if you would like to know how to avoid these mistakes and listen to some tips of what to do instead, including some source stories from things that happened to me and my friends, keep on watching, perhaps subscribe, and also check the description because you can also find your Udemy discount to learn Greek with me. So, mistake number one is not dressing for the weather and actually not packing correctly. There are two types of people who make this mistake. People who either think there is no winter in Greece, like, at all, or people who underestimate Greek summers. I actually have seen a lot of people who belong in the first category and I know someone who had to buy a winter jacket when visiting Greece in December, thinking he can just walk around with a pullover. Greece has very mild winters, meaning that, you know, it's very unlikely that it will snow or that it will be below freezing temperatures, but we still have winters. I know that there are a lot of popular summer destinations that are in the tropics and the temperature rarely drops below 26 degrees Celsius. And there, of course, it's always summer. You can just always go with your swords and sword sleeves, but this is not the case in Greece. No, you don't need your ski equipment unless you're going on a mountain, but you need at least a jacket and some boots or shoes that are closed and they're not open like sandals because we do have winters. This is a mistake I think a lot of people make, especially from northern countries. I see them walking around in swords and sword sleeves and sandals, and they always end up buying entire outfits for the rest of the days because they can't handle how cold it is. So always make sure that you check the weather forecast for the destination you're visiting and pack appropriately. Now, there are also some people who underestimate the Greek summer. As I said again, Greece is not a tropical country, so it tends to be much drier. And Greece is also known for how sunny it actually is. So make sure that you always wear a hat when going sightseeing in the middle of the day. And that you wear lighter colors, lighter shades, not what I'm wearing right now, which is black because black and darker shades absorb sunlight and will increase your overall temperature. And that's not what you want to do in the summer. So, before you pack your bags, make sure that you have a hat included in there and lighter colors for the daytime. Now let's get on to mistake number two, which is something that I, as a local, had done in the past multiple times. And I actually know someone who visited Greece and ended up in a very random place because of that. And that is to not double check Google Maps before booking accommodation or a cab or, I don't know, just walking somewhere. It may be also common in your country, but I know that it is perhaps a little bit more common in Greece that you have different places with the exact same name. And that includes also people. I mean, you will find a lot of people named Yanis, Kostas, Eleni, Maria. My name is a combination of Maria and Eleni. So here you have one example. There are even towns named the same. There is Trikala in Thessaly, for example. There is Trikala in Corinthia, which is a group of villages. So imagine if there is a wedding of someone you know in Trikala and you're just looking for accommodation, 
you type Tricolor Greece in the search engine of a booking platform, you find an affordable hotel, you book it, and you find out that it is in the opposite side of Greece than where you're supposed to travel to. That is not what you want to do here. So always double check locations on Google Maps before booking anything. And that is especially true for islands. This has happened to me multiple times and I always had to be super aware of what I'm booking. This is a mistake you can easily make. Basically, there are some really small islands that are also very popular. An example would be Kimolos or Antiparos or Folegandros. So the options to book a hotel or an apartment there are very limited. At the same time, booking platforms sometimes think that sea is land. So let's say you are looking for an accommodation in Kimolos, you may be recommended a hotel in Serifos, which is close, but also a completely different island. So always make sure that you're actually booking accommodation for the island you're interested in and not for a nearby island that just has more options. And the next thing is actually also very common is that Athens is quite spread out. It's a big city, almost half of the population of Greece lives there. So if you're interested in going sightseeing, visiting the city center, Parthenon, and the most important places in Athens, Always double check where you're booking your accommodation. You may end up in a very random neighborhood like the one I grew up in while living in Athens and you may spend hours transporting from one place to another with buses, trams or even taxis just to get to the places you actually want to visit. Not only that, but there are certain streets that are just named the same. So I will share with you a very short story of something really stressful that happened to me when I was perhaps 22 years old and I lived in Greece. Keep in mind, this is the city I grew up in and I originate from. So that happened around eight years ago when I still lived in Greece and I worked as a journalist. And the media group where my company was located told me that I should go visit the headquarters of this big corporation that used to advertise on our website to attend this CSR event for journalists that they were holding. I said, okay, this would happen in a couple of days. They gave me the address and I made the great mistake of just typing the address on Google Maps instead of typing the address plus the name of the company. It was located on a really big avenue in Greece that goes from the center up to the northern suburbs in the middle of nowhere. And I saw that the number that I was supposed to go to was actually not so far north. It was a little bit closer to the city center. So I could leave the company around like half an hour before the event, hop onto one bus, travel for 20 minutes, and then I would have 10 plus minutes to socialize with the other journalists you know, usually in these events, they always have a buffet with some finger food and something to drink. So it was perfect, let's just say. The take comes, I leave, I say goodbye to my colleagues. You know, I was representing the company I was working for. I hop into the bus. I stop exactly where I was supposed to stop. I arrive at the number where the headquarters were supposedly at, but I was very surprised because I was surrounded by this very typical block of flats that you find all around Athens. But, you know, this is like a very big corporation. I was expecting like a huge building with reserved spots for the employees to park their cars at. There was no logo of this corporation, nothing. I was really surprised. I arrive at the door and I see that only people lived there and maybe there was also a doctor's office. And someone was exiting the building and asking, excuse me, like, where is this corporation? And they were taken aback. They were like really surprised that I asked that. They had no idea where this corporation is located. I go again on Google Maps. I see that I'm in the exact location that I was supposed to be, but something was wrong. Obviously, I had made a mistake. So I just delete the address and I write the name of this corporation. 
and it takes me further onto this map to a completely different location, like far in the northern suburbs, in the middle of nowhere. Actually, this avenue is separated into different sections, like A, B, C, and the list goes on. That meant that it's so long that at some point the numbers stop and then they start again from zero. The numbers stop, they start again from zero. And I realized that even if I took a taxi at that same moment, I would still be a little bit late. And you know, this can happen to anyone who perhaps needs to go to the airport or to the port in time. So always make sure that you double check Google Maps before you do anything, basically. The next mistake that people make when visiting Greece is actually not trying the local cuisine. I don't know how many people I've seen visiting Greece and going directly to the US American chains such as Starbucks to get their coffee or to McDonald's to have something to eat. And they actually think that these places are also more affordable, which is not the case in Greece. For example, McDonald's is not even considered cheap. You can find higher quality street food that is made within minutes in a souvlaki place and you can experience the local cuisine. You can also go into a bakery, try the pie of the day, such as panakopita. This might cost you like, what, two, three euros. It's so cheap and much more delicious if you ask me. At the same time, Greece is known for its coffee, cold coffee, so you can go to any coffee to go place, any bakery and you can get something to drink. It will be much more affordable, very tasty and you will experience what the locals eat and drink. And of course there are countless tavernas and even some very fancy restaurants where you can dine with a view to the Acropolis or, you know, the starry night somewhere in the middle of nowhere in a seaside location. So that was quick and quite clear. The next mistake, number four, is actually specific to one location, and that is Athens again, and that is when people rent a car to move around. This is only not necessary because there is a public transportation system and the taxis are very cheap, but it's also quite stressful for a lot of people. Well, driving in Athens has been described a little bit chaotic at times. There are way too many cars. Uh, Greek drivers are also known for being the most reckless drivers in Europe, if not the most dangerous. So, so keep that in mind. This is not the feeling you want when you're on vacation to be all stressed out. And also, there are always limited parking spots. So if you are going to visit the city center and all the landmarks, I mean, this is what people usually do when they visit a city, you don't need a car. So unless you are going to visit other places around Athens, I don't think it's necessary to rent a car. And last but not least, the fifth mistake is also very specific to a particular location, and that is Mykonos. I don't know how many people every year complain about the prices in this island. Sometimes you listen about these stories in the news, and that is because people either go to a restaurant or a club, they don't search beforehand the price range, or they don't even check the menu to see the price of the dish they order, and they are very surprised when they receive the receipt. Because Mykonos can be very expensive. In Sandorini, it's one of the most expensive islands in Greece, but especially Mykonos is let's just say, designed for jet setters, people who are looking for a very luxurious vacation. Of course, there are many options for the average person. So always make sure that you search the businesses you're going to dine in beforehand, see the price ranges, and don't order something without checking the price in the menu first. This tip will save you not dozens, but hundreds of euros in the end. So keep that in mind. So these were the tips I wanted to give to all of you and avoid the five most common mistakes people make when traveling to Greece. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can like, you can comment down below, share this video with a friend and stick around and also visit helenica.com for more free content like this. And as I also said earlier, I'm also offering Greek courses online. So if you're interested in learning Greek, you can find your Udemy discount 
in the description. See you again with another video.